When was the last time you did that? Welcome to Red Panda Party. My name is Pedrock and with me is... Jay. And today we are doing an unboxing of the TCG variety. We were able to get some dope ass Digimon cards, which is a new game that's coming out. And we're excited, I'm very excited to open them because I love opening uh, booster packs. But it's also gonna be fun to talk about because it's this has been a very messy release for the game. All right, Jay, why don't you start us off? Tell us a little bit about uh, your history with card games while I show these off. I, uh, I didn't, I'm not really into that uh, many trading card games. I, I mean, obviously everyone was in Pokemon back in what, 99, 2000. I only played Yu-Gi-Oh for a little bit. I played Magic for like a month, which was fun for that month. This game has kind of got my attention a little bit because uh, Pedro over here is super, has been super, super excited for this game. And two, I've been actually been hearing a lot of chatter about this game in Japan too, from my friends over there. If a lot of people are excited for this game, it must be good. So the game is produced by Bandai and they're just using their IP for Digimon to create a card game. You'll see that it plays similar to what Bandai has been doing the past few years, like they did with Dragon Ball Super um, and some of their other games. But this one, they just nailed down some very nice mechanics uh, that we'll go over. And the game just plays fast. It's pretty intuitive. The game arts, the card art is also really, really pretty. So they've just, I don't know what happened over there. Finally, somebody had a very good idea. The game's been out in Japan for quite a while. They're already on their like fifth booster set. And they're just now getting the cards to North America and the rest of the world. But that's gone a little bit messy because of COVID. So what we're actually opening today is booster packs that are titled uh, 1.5 booster packs. And this is technically the second uh, set of booster packs that have come out in the rest of the world in English. The first booster packs were version 1.0. The funky part is that these two sets for the rest of the world, in Japan, they were actually three sets. So Japan came out with the game, came out with a second wave of the game, came out with a third wave of cards for the game. They're on their fourth and fifth now. Yeah, they're on five right now. Yeah, but for us, we're literally just getting a booster pack that just has the first three all jumbled up. Um, they haven't been very good about communicating with people and distributors about when people will get it. So finding these has been very difficult. For example, what we have here today I had to travel three hours away. <laughs> I, that's like to get. four. <clears throat> eight hour round trip, basically. Yeah, it was about eight hour round trip because I had to go to two stores. And you did it out of the blue, which was all of us. Out of the blue. We saw in chat, it's like, <laughs> man, Pedro went down all the way down there. Like, he's a bad guy. Yeah, he's and such it, a bad guy. And it was purely luck because it was just, I saw a Reddit post saying that they were going to have these cards. And overnight, I just kind of decided to, to make the trip because for me, Card games and my history with it is similar. It started with Pokemon, but I never, you know, as a kid, you never played by the rules. I had imagination. Imagination was my rules. I, mean, <laughs> I just made up whatever the fuck I wanted the cards to do. Back then, it was just like, yeah, no one knew how to play the game. We no. just had the cards. It was like, oh, I had my Blast Toys, my Charizard. And right? I want to use it, so I'm going to play them. And that was kind of my, like, entire history with card games like when I got the Yu Hakusho card game the Dragon Ball Z card game I, I, at that point I knew how to play the games properly but I didn't know how to play card games competitively so it was still just oh I want to use these cards let me just make a deck and let me just use it yeah and it wasn't until uh, I guess 2012 when the Dragon Ball Z card game the by Panini got released that I got very into card games and learning how to play card games properly so this one's very exciting because you guys are also interested in the Digimon IP. So we'll be able to get, you know, play together. I'm actually and that'll be fun. just okay with the Digimon IP. I really Trader. like the names. <laughs> the names of the Digimon crack me up all the time. There are some that are very funky and there are some that are very lazy. So I'm hoping to pull some of the lazy ones. Both of them I love. Yeah, <laughs> both of them I love. The exciting part for me with this game is that Digimon did used to have a card game. And it had a card game way back when. Yeah, a long time ago when they were like, really <clears throat> pumping out a lot of stuff for that show. Yeah, so this one doesn't play anything like that, but it's arguably a little bit of a better ramp. So whenever you open a booster pack, the nice part is that every single uh, booster pack will come with one of these. 
And this is how you keep track over your mana usage in the game. And it also acts as a checklist for the available cards in the set. Which is very nice, because yeah. like Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic cards, you, you just have you to find that stuff like, online. Yeah. But back then, like we didn't even use the internet that much. So it's like, uh, I don't know. Ooh. What do you got? <laughs> I got a Death Parade Blaster. See, that's a, that's a good card. See, Akilamon is fine. Miramon's fine. Gazimon. It has all your um, classic, like, it has a good set of recognizable Digimon from the show. And the card arts are insanely sick and amazing. And my favorites are the ones by this dude. Who is the name of this guy? Sasasi. Uh, it tells you on the side the name of the artist for the card. Ah. And he does a lot of art from the Digimon World 1 card, uh, PS1 game. So I've been really enjoying seeing those cards because that's my favorite Digimon game outside of. Um, you swear by that game, and I've seen playthrough of that game. And that, that game is really bad. Game but... doesn't look that fun at all. Ooh, and we got our first rare. So with booster packs, usually every booster will guarantee at least one rare of a card. So we're expecting from this box to have at least 24 rare cards that come from it. Hopefully. Yeah, well, and some of them will be the super rares and the secret rares. So our first super uh, or rare card will be Edamon. And they look so, not only do they look pretty, but they get this nice little like gold border around it. Let me see if I can show it off on the- You can kind of see it shimmer, bit. shimmer in the camera. Yeah, yeah there it is. Oh, that's so pretty. Um, but most of the pack will be made up of like common cards and- I mean, these are too. Oh shit, yeah, we got two then. Yeah. yeah, oh, maybe it comes with two in a pack. Hell yeah. Oh, I'm down for that. Okay, what'd you get in yours? I don't know. Pedro did the bad thing too yesterday. We went to another store <laughs> that had booster packs and he just bought me booster packs. He's like, all right, I want you, I want you back in. <laughs> I want you back in the game. And I opened my four and I, it was bad. I felt it. Dude, do you not enjoy opening booster I packs? I felt the rush. That's so fun. I opened all of them <laughs> very fast. It's so exciting to do. And now we can be like all those uh, Pokemon channels. Channel you YouTubers, yeah. You gotta yeah. line it up, you gotta tap it, and then you reveal. Is that how you they do, do the it? slow reveal. All yeah. I know is that... That way you don't show any of the shiny stuff. Pokemon YouTubers, you guys are making Target, all these game stores sell out of Pokemon cards everywhere. I can't, like when I go shopping for like groceries and stuff, I don't see Pokemon cards because they're just sold out. What's really funny is that I've been to Target a bunch looking for Digimon cards. And there is a, they always have a card section. Ooh, got a Vmon, hell yeah. I'm just throwing these down. Oh, Sukumon. the two rares. Look at this dude, this dude's looking insane. Sukumon, this is poop. He's a poop Digimon. Does it say, is this a bit, oh, is he a, is this type poop? Does it say poop? Abnormal, that means poop. Poop. <laughs> Aru, Aruramon, Aru. Aurora. Auroramon. It's not Aurora, it's Aurora. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, the targets, the card sections, they're empty. And they're, I was just like, oh, it's COVID. It's just pandemic. Right. They can't get restocked. Which is what I thought. But at the same time... Because the magic cards are in full yeah, stock. Yeah, they're in full stock. Magic, so... It's the Pokemon cards. Pokemon section, gone. empty. Right next to it. Magic, full. YouTuber streamers. <laughs> and technically us, if you're opening oh, yeah, this yeah, on yeah, our video. Is. We're part of the problem. No, we're not part of the problem. We're just capitalists. It's true. Which is crazy. <laughs> At the same time, scalpers have been really going crazy on like eBay, StockX. Those prices are really high for a box of Pokemon cards. For Pokemon, it's also affected. So for Digimon, that's where this game has also had a, a rough start because these cards go very quickly. Uh, so whenever you contact, if you're trying to get these cards, what we recommend is you it's Google. It's the same dude. Yeah, it's the same. Digimon, it's just that different but effects, different costs. It's rare. They're different. Yeah. The, uh, you want to look up local stores near you. Oh shit, Bifrost. That's store. Um, you want to look up stores near you that do hobbies and card games and contact them. I've pretty much sent a message over social media or called all the stores near me um, to ask if they have any information on when they're going to get Digimon cards. And most of them say, not really, Ch keep checking social media. And they're not getting things until last. Oh, shit. Say that really fast. Kreskarurumon. 
Chris I Garur 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 I've, okay. I've seen this card before. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm excited for this card. This card is actually pretty strong. Um, how shiny it is. I like the new holographic cards now that a lot of these cards have now. They, they really go the extra mile to make it more shiny. Yeah. A bit more rare. And it also isn't. So the, the issue before, let me see if I can get a good glare. No. Uh, You're just blinding everybody. Now. I know. So the <laughs> issue with other hollows is that they used to make it where it was like impossible. Like every card would look like that pretty much. <laughs> like you would try to read it and you're like, I, I can't, what, what does that even say? But they've done a good job of understanding that the creatures or like the features of the card that need to be highlighted, they need to be some sort of matte color. Right. So that it stands out from the back and the shininess in the background. Give me one of these. Give me one of these. So uh, the card arts definitely have gotten better. Uh, they also do a pretty good job of not being super messy. Um, the card de art design is pretty clean. Like I'm not a big fan of the Dragon Ball Super card game. Those cards are way too flashy. There's just so much going on because they're trying to have like energy and auras and all that. I'm just not a fan. But for Digimon, they've good marks all around. Magna Ange Angemon? Angemon. Angemon. Dude, he was in the show. I you do, but when did he be wrong. when did he become Magna? He never actually. Oh no, he did once against Piedmon. Uh, towards the end of the show, when they fought Piedmon, he finally gets to. Uh, what was his name? TK? His hope crest finally lights up and Anjumon digivolves. Which is funny, there's actually been a reboot of Digimon. I didn't know until quite recently. It came out like last year, Ooh. I think at the beginning of COVID. Busted card. Busted card. Busted, Busted card. Busted, <laughs> Busted cards. Apparently this is, uh, we checked the website. Uh, there's already been some bans on yeah. some certain cards. This card will soon be limited to only one per deck because it, it just, it ramps. It's very powerful. Also, when did they give Mummymon a gun? Check this dude out. He just straight has a gap. What is a Clockmon? It's, it's a, a Digimon that's a clock. Come on. That's very, right. it's in the name. <laughs> Clockmon. Leomon. Goldramon. Ooh, Garurumon. Nice. There's a classic. Oh, we got your Rise Greymon, Jay. You love this card. I, I did. I did like that card. That card is good. Minomon, Phoenixmon. Hell yeah. And a Vmon. His, his set is pretty good. No, oh, we got one hollow, right? Uh, one we've gotten secret one rare. secret rare. Most others have been regular rare, which is standard for a booster pack or for a pack. So part of the, um, the reason the scalpers, particularly for this game, has been going kind of crazy and um, if you're getting into this game, you're gonna have to have some some patience because what I was explaining before is you need to contact your stores and just be up to date. And whenever you find something or hear something, pull the trigger if you really want it. They have the whole- If you want it at an MSRP price. That's true. So like prices, if we can talk about that real quick, the starter decks are supposed to be like 10 bucks, but this one was being sold for 25 because they just, they know. Even the stores know that they can just jack up the price. Well, even uh, for one of the other decks that I got, it was still like $12.99, which is still a normal price. $12.99 for a starter Correct, is still a normal price. You also drove eight hours for this normal sure, price. Sure, so you know, it would be. <laughs> <laughs> and even for this, the store uh, only had limited qualities, quantities. So being able to purchase this was also limited. For example, I was able to buy one starter deck and 12 loose booster packs at one store. And then the other store, I could get one starter deck and the box. So you're not gonna, because of that. Oh shit, I started from the fucking back and I, that's a nice card. Ragna Lordmon. Lord. Lordmon. It's not Lord, Lord. Ragna Lordmon. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> I started from the back. Oops. We're bad, we're bad Pokemon booster pack unboxers. No, man, just keep them excited. Keep them uh, guessing. Um, but the other aspect is that because it's not just that supplies are limited. It's that they haven't um, re-released packs. Oh, shit, you got a Shine Greymon? Dude, what? How many Secret Wars was that in, in the eight packs that we got? None. This was like half a box. These are SRs, whatever SR means. Uh, super rare or secret rares. Um, ah, super rares. So you yeah. can see on the back here, it says 152 
64 uncommons, 40 un uh, uncommons, 35 rares, 10 super rares, and three secret rares. But this batch of booster packs was like half of a box. So from half a box, you're gonna get at least about three secret rares. That's a pretty nice pull. Um, so when you're investing into a full box, you're ending up with a good chunk of like very nice rarity cards. The also really nice part is this Ragna Lord Loardmon. This is one of the alternate arts. So the thing that they're doing with this set, let me put this rare over here. The thing that they're doing with this game is that the cards come with special art. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna show off some of the other boosters that we had already opened. So for example, these are Jay's. Beforehand, he opened about, what, it was like four packs. Four plus, so there's a, when oh, you buy yeah. a starter deck, it comes with a booster pack inside. So seven packs, and out of seven packs, mm -hmm. you were able to get another three, you know, super rares. And you had a nice little bunch of rare cards as well. Let me move these over. You had a nice map card, an Upamon, you had another Phoenixmon, Chimeramon, the Xvedramon, Joe, Mimi, and some special option cards. Um, for me, I opened about same, uh, uh, almost the same as you, about four, about three or four boosters that came with the starter decks and about four of the boosters from this set. And I was able to pull um, like a Brave Shield. So that was kind of nice. Again, that's just a rare card. Um, another rare card, which is a stronger Digimon. But I got a Blitz Greymon, which is a super rare. I got the alternative art and I got the regular version of it. So for the cards, the alternative versions, it's just a different image. It's just a style thing, but the effects and the powers and all that all remain the same. So it's just nice to, to have a couple. Um, I guess I can compare it. So this is the regular Brave Shield, and then there's a special art Brave Shield that you can get. Now this um, Brave Shield art in particular, I don't think you can get it in the regular booster packs, what you do get them with is the box toppers. So do you know what box toppers are? No. So this is another way. <laughs> box know, toppers but... are a thing in card games that are extra packs that are generally only have like one card in there. And the card is very promotional in nature. And that special booster pack only comes when you buy the booster and they're supposed to be in the box for when you open the box, it'd be on, on the top. top as a and box here it is. Topper. Oh. oh. <laughs> there you go. Well, I didn't know that we were gonna get it because when I bought this box, they gave them to me. So they had these other promotional packs. And so now we get these special box toppers, which are usually just alternative art and not necessarily something that can only be obtained through this. You can open that one. This is the same thing, another box topper? Yeah. Well, they're doing, I think that one's technically called a dash pack. So that's the other uh, kind of awkward part about the game. In just buying the product, there's just so many terms and like weird things that come with it that it makes it kind of confusing to, to know what it is you're getting or why you would be getting it. But essentially these top packs are just special card arts. Damn, he looks tight. Yeah, they look very nice. What happened to him? <laughs> He grew up. This is uh, this is preteen age. Preteen before the movies. Yeah. And so these end up being pretty nice. These are also going to be a little bit pricier, but that's only because that's just how promotional arts and like box toppers work. But they're not necessary for playing the game. Really, the the majority of what you'll need to play the game isn't even the super rares and the secret rares. It's mostly going to be the commons and uncommons that fill up the deck anyway. So pretty good pulls. Pretty good way to start. So you get one half, Jay. Wow, that's right. great. And I get one half, man. That was exciting. And this is now our trash pile. Oh yeah. Uh, you can also, what these nice boxes are, like if you're starting out and you don't have a place to put your cards, this is a great place to just keep your cards um, in storage for a while. As you can see, I'm gonna throw shade on Jay. This heathen just has blank ass cards. I'm getting my fingerprints and my dust all over it. 
My stuff is nice and protected. I, I don't have all these card sleeves. <laughs> you, you forced me to buy these cards and now I'm in it. And here we are. Dude, this is legitimately a thing that goes straight to my like dopamine centers um, and just gets me hooked. So I haven't played a card game in a long time. I have dabbled in a couple like mobile card games here and mm -hmm. there. I played a little bit of Shadowverse. I tried Hearthstone. Those games were kind of interesting to me because like I said, the only previous games I played were Magic and Yu-Gi-Oh. Magic is a little, I forgot how to play, but I remember it was a little bit more complicated and convoluted. Yu-Gi-Oh is just broken. Yeah. It's just broken, broken. But there is like, and kind of a lot of rules like trap cards, face down, defense, right? There's a lot of like, it's kind of complicated. So when I tried these recent mobile card games, it's streamlined because you have to play on the phone. People are supposed to play while they're commuting. It's supposed to be a fast game. And when I finally watched mm -hmm. uh, Pedro play a game or two of uh, Digimon, I realized like, wow, this is very similar to like the mobile kind of game where it's like fast, yeah. but still like pretty deep. Yes. Yeah, there was, um, card games have taken uh, a funky-ish history. Because card games used to be that if you were creating a card game with whatever IP or even an original one, part of what made the game stand out were its mechanics, they were what the effects were, etc., the playstyle, right? And especially if you were doing something like an IP like Dragon Ball Z or Digimon or Yu Yu Hakusho or whatever, or Inuyasha, there was an expectation that the game would mimic the show somehow, right? That you would have and you would feel as if you were, you know, doing the things in the show. It's the same thing that video games do, mm -hmm. right? Ooh, nice. But eventually that takes a lot of work and that's, you know, takes investing into game developers and designers. If games all play weird, there's no standard form to it. It just gets messy. And so over the years, it started getting simplified, especially by Bandai. Bandai was very big at creating um, simplified forms of a game where they addressed the issues of card games. Right. Like they don't want you to be mana screwed. So they, they don't have games, they don't develop games that have like land systems like you have in Magic. They don't, you know, they don't want you to have that issue or they create mechanics to avoid um, uh, the other problems of TCGs, like say, not being able to address what your opponent is doing. So when, for example, Bandai had the Naruto card game back in like mid 2000s, and part of the mechanics of the Naruto card game were that you could not play a card before a certain turn. Part of the like the th the icons that mm -hmm. you would see on a card, there would be a particular icon that had a number, and it would say like turn seven. So even if you had all the resources, even if you could play the card legally, if it wasn't turn seven, you weren't able to play it. And so mechanics like that, I don't feel good to me. They they seem kind of like nasty because they're trying to just prevent you from doing card game things. Right. That's just what you're supposed to be able to do in a card game. Get stuff out early. That's part of a strategy. But with this Digimon game, they've just hit a very nice balance where um, they don't have anything stupid or restrictive. Um, they give you a, a simple mem uh, system for playing any card. You don't have to really manage mana. Um, you use these little cards to keep track of your mana. And... Like you said, you watch the game a couple of times and it just starts to click how it's supposed to work. Which is funny because I did a little bit more research on this game. This, the how the the format works is not, actually not original. What is that? Why is it so Imperial shiny? Drummond. Dragon mode. Dragon mode. Love Imperial Drummond. He's such a cool. But yeah, this game isn't the first of its kind. No, This is like no. a fifth, fourth, a third, fifth revision of yeah. the same game. Uh, the guy, I forgot what his name is, but the guy that developed this, uh, he, has a, yeah. he has a term for it, like Clash, something Clash, mm -hmm. where it has like the, the mana where you, if you spend mana, you give mana to the other person and vice versa. He's been making a couple of games for Bandai over the years. I think on the webpage, I saw Naruto, one of Naruto's mm -hmm. games was on there. 
and that's all I remember. So like, it's funny how that this game is the one that has taken off. Maybe it's the power of the IP of Digimon. Yeah, it and could be. The power of just Japan loving Digimon. <laughs> I mean, every time I go back to Japan, I always see like promotional stuff for whatever the new Digimon stuff they're pushing, like the movies, the the new show. Um, yeah, they just love Digimon over there. Oh, we got you on a, another Rise Greymon. Oh, I got a Mon. Love some Shirubis. I want to see a secret rare. Where are these secret rares? <laughs> Argomon. Bancho Stingmon. The, um... Angelomon, there she is. Oh, and Lady Devamon. I know, I know the internet be horny for her. <laughs> and her. Hey. Oh. I mean, this is the classic though. Yeah. Yeah, the classic horny, horny character. Everyone loves her. The, as uh, another aspect of the game that I really enjoy is the naming system. So... In card games, you're limited to how many cards you can have a, a, a copy of each, right? In Digimon, you can only have four copies in a deck of a certain card. Broken card. <laughs> <laughs> so for now, you can have four Argomon in your deck. Soon, no. Um, but the game doesn't try to create different Argomons by using weird naming systems like Super Argomon or green Argomon or blue Argomon. Except they do it with Gatomon. <laughs> there is a black Gatomon. But those are all, um, they just use the Digimon's name. And the way you differentiate which different cards you can use is you actually go by the card number. So you can only have four of BT3-065, this particular card um, identified by its number. And if you compare this to how the Digimon uh, Super... What the fuck did you get? Ooh, Old Force, another copy of it. Shiny. Very shiny. Um, if you compare it to, say, like, the way they did it in the Dragon Ball Super card game, the naming conventions in that game are stupid. There's Vegeta. There's Furious Yell Vegeta. The fuck's a Furious Yell Vegeta? He's yelling. Come on, man. That's dumb. I hate well, it. Well, it's coincidentally the, the Digimon series, the naming works out for the cards. No. Because there's so many different forms, right? I don't know how the show works. I know there's the War Greymon, that... Greymon, Metal War Greymon. Yeah, but those are all different Digimon. What I'm saying is if this game were to do what it did with Super, you would have Metal Greymon. Yelling would... War Greymon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yelling Metal Greymon, Bending Metal Greymon, Rusted Metal Greymon, and that's dumb. That doesn't like sound cool. Not to me anyway. Then you got Penguin Mon. What is this? <laughs> I Penguin love these Mon's names. Like, he gives you fish in Digimon World 1. Look at this Saber Drummon. This dude looks dope. I like this. Ooh, read this, Jay. <laughs> Tealudamon. <laughs> it's an aunt. Oh, we got a Vikemon. Vikemon or Vikemon? How would you say? Vikemon. Vikemon? A delicate plant. No, mon. VK. <laughs> Vikemon? If you're thinking of it in like Japanese terms. Uh, I'm assuming there's like localization. What is that? Ooh, it's this card. Alternate art, baby. Oh, that's our secret rare. That's the first one. Oh, oh okay. You know what? The secret rares might actually be alternate cards, art, card arts then. Let me see. Let me compare. You can tell the, the rarity on like a little corner of the the number identification. So like super yeah. rare is SR and then secret rare is SEC. Wow, look at that. You did it. Yeah, and it's just an, uh, an alternate art. So I think that this game is pretty um, forgiving in that the super rare limited stuff that you're gonna get from a box Ooh. isn't necessary. Oh, you got another Kreska Rurumon? Oh, we can build a nice fucking deck. Let's fucking go. I'm excited for that. Um, but yeah, the, the super limited rares and very pretty cards are merely for collection. So if you wanted to play, you don't absolutely need to have it to, to be able to use. Just Isn't the current Pokemon card game different from the original Pokemon card game or is it the same? It's still the same. The base of it is still the same. 
they just uh, changed how the cards look like now? Because I've, I've seen yes. how the, some of those cards look. They don't look anything like what the original ones look like now. Yeah, the uh, essentially what has changed over the years for Pokemon... <gasps> what? Oh, these are both rares. I was like, what? I only got one rare, you motherfuckers. Fuck this game. We're very petty in the TCG community. Pokemon cards have just changed, not just because they've created new types of cards, but um, they've just worked on the on the card arts so much. Um, and they've tried to... Oh, you got one of them? I love Silphimon. <laughs> Jay, this is a DNA Digimon. Did you not... Oh, yeah, you didn't watch Digimon that much. I only watched season one, a little bit of season two. In season two, they allowed the Digimons to fusion dance. And so the fu the ultimates were all fusions of the, of the champion levels. Mm -hmm. This is one of them, which is why you see that it's a red and a, and a yellow. But to the Pokemon thing, Pokemon has just gotten to, they know what like sells their cards. People want that collection aspect. So the cards are just incredibly pretty, incredibly shiny. That McDonald's collaboration not too long ago. Yeah. Uh -huh. You got people line, like buying out and taking just a box of, of Happy Meals from McDonald's. Dude, I didn't get any of them. Did you try to? No, I didn't even try. Ooh, we got a great Pokemon. I mean, I didn't, at that time, I didn't realize that Pokemon was like popping. Mm. I was like, why is it at McDonald's? That's cool. Why is everyone buying? <laughs> That's weird. Well, usually Pokemon <laughs> returns to McDonald's every once in a while. This like, dude, this, almost every year. This dude just straight up has a gun. Yeah, this is, I, I called it a Airsoft cosplayer. This is showing up at Comic Cat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, um, yeah, Pokemon returns to McDonald's almost every year. But it's just like toys. It's just, you know, little toys. And it does come, the toys do come with, uh, um, cards, but they're nothing special. I don't know what happened this time around. I didn't pay too much attention to I it. I don't remember this character. Maybe it's another season? No, Ken is from season two. He just appeared later on. He was the sixth or fifth Digidestin for that season. Yeah. He was cool. He was he was the villain. Hey, we got Black Autumn on. Spoilers. It's very obvious. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh shit, this is just a rare? Oh, I'm excited. Fucking love Mellow My Otis Mon. Hey, we got for Chi. This is one of Chi's favorite characters. Mega Gargomon. Oh, these are rares too. That's nice. Love that guy. Do you remember him, Jay? Nope. Mallow Mallow Myus Timon. Mallow My Otis Mon, dude. Come on. He was the villain for the first series. Oh, we have a lot of Agumons. I, I pulled I like all the different art for Agumon. Yep. And this one is just like summer version where he's just tanned. <laughs> <laughs> They've done a pretty nice job of reusing and revamping so that the different Agumons play and serve different um, roles. So the thing that I like about it is um, if you like playing Digimon or if you like building a certain type of deck, let's say a more aggressive. Oh shit, you got another Blitz Greymon. I'm hyped for that too. And you got a very durable Digimon. Durandramon. But if you like to play the game fast, you can probably find Agumon cards that fit a more fast and aggressive playstyle. And if you like control, you can probably find Agumons that do that too. Oh, look at this name. Read that. Craniamon? Craniamon. This one's dope. I like this one. You get a lot of super rares. In a, in a in a box. But I want those secret wares. They're so secret. <laughs> I need more. You're so greedy. There's only like three. There's in only the whole three. Set. There's only three. In the whole set, so. Oh, Tankmon. Yep. He also cosplays like Comic Cat. Oh. I don't kidding though. Broken okay. card. Broken card. <laughs> Geo Greymon. I, I do like sense. the art, how like it is all slightly different. It, it doesn't all look the same. They have different artists. Yeah. You can see all the different artists on the side. I like oh sh oh shit! I'm so excited for this Jake. Oh another secret. You yeah. Alternative art. We have two out of oh, the three dude, secrets. I'm we so just excited. need one more and we can get the last one. See, that's the thing that I didn't understand. I didn't understand it. so when you look at the booster packs. It tells you here, there's 152 total different types of cards. 
you get 64 commons, 40 uncommons, 35 rares, 10 super rares. Ooh. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> and three secret rares. I didn't know if this actually meant what the box consisted of or if it was the entire set. You get what I'm saying? Mm hmm So if there are three secret rares in a box, then I feel like this game is very generous with what you're what you're getting for buying a box. I mean, it's new. There's not that many cards out yet. Technically, but that's not really the, the driving force. My I guess my understanding is when they do box distributions, they can pretty much control what comes into. Sure. For example, right, you get a set number of commons in every booster. You get a set number of uncommons and a set number of rares in each booster. But within the box, that's where the distribution varies. And so some games are pretty like aggressive. Like when the Dragon Ball Z game first came out. What is this? Okay, these are all rares. When the Dragon Ball Z card game first came out, each booster box wasn't guaranteed to even have one of the higher, like their secret rare version mm -hmm. of the card. That You weren't guaranteed to have that. You weren't guaranteed to have that every two boxes. So you could buy three boxes and get only one of the secret rare high tier, which made it incredibly impossible to collect and extremely expensive. On a card. Ah, oh, you got jack shit. <laughs> Is this Edamon? Yeah, we've seen him before. Okay, we got Arrow Vidramon. Ooh! What the fuck is this? Right, the Lord Mon. He's back. <laughs> He's back, baby. We, oh, I have the alternate art. This is the original. This is the alternate art. All right, last, last card. Last booster pack. Last booster. Last hit of dopamine, baby. I feel it. I, I tear, tore that foil open. <laughs> I'm feeling it. We're getting it. The, secret, the last secret rare right here. We got Plasma Steak. Another Penguin Mon. <laughs> Zuba, Zuba Eager Mon. It's very eager. Very Zuba too. Beast Cyclone. Gargamon. Armadillo Mon. What? He's from season. He's one of the stars of season two. I don't hey, remember, man. Maramon. The Ray of Victory. Got him on. Mon. Okay. Ooh, I like to Kakamon. I want to make Kakamon. a deck with And the final card in our booster pack. Give it to me, baby. We got Jack shit. Yeah. Fuck that card. <laughs> That's a good card, actually. This is actually a pretty nice pull for what we got from Secret Rares. I have been see people have been sharing like the th the pulls that they've gotten online, and I was seeing them pull so freaking much, and I was assuming that they were just buying a fuck ton of boxes. But no, you get some juicy stuff. You got a secret rare, we got a secret rare from this one box. We got super rare, super rare, super rare, super rare, super rare. What was that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight super rares on top of having the box stoppers, special promotional stuff. Pretty nice haul. I'm very happy with the Black War Greymon. Fucking love that Digimon. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, and especially having two rares per booster pack, that actually fills out your collection super quickly. Damn, I am surprised how generous Bandai has been. I can't believe I'm shelling for Bandai. Have you not never before? No, I fucking hated Bandai. I hate like the games that they did, like I told you, they they watered down mechanics in strange ways that just didn't feel good. They also take IPs where it doesn't make sense to have multiples. Like, why would you have multiples of the same Goku. I can understand having Goku, Super Saiyan Goku, Super Saiyan 2 Goku. Right, sure. But having five Super Saiyan Gokus where one of them's just yelling furiously. <laughs> I want that card. I'm gonna find that card. I have so many of that <laughs> card. <laughs> I kept buying that card and I kept giving it to my friend and pissing him off. <laughs> well anyways, as we sort these cards, stay yeah. tuned for our next video where we actually play a game and yeah. show you how it's played. So, uh, see ya. I'm busy, Jay. Don't leave. Click, click the next video. Just, it'll be, we'll be right here. <laughs> click it. Dude, look at all these cards. Doesn't this turn you on? <laughs>